Uganda, landlocked on the African continent, bordering five countries. South Sudan to the north, Kenya to the east, Tanzania and Rwanda to the south, and the DRC to the west. I'm riding through Kampala, a vibrant living capital filled with streets of motorbikes and people busting their asses to survive. I'm headed into the mountains on an 11 hour drive to hike into and exist in the home of the only mountain gorillas in the wild. I thought I was doing this solo, but my friend Al surprised me and flew out last minute. So, Kimberly doesn't know that I'm here, so thinks I'm in, in D.C. <laughs> so we about to surprise her right now. She, she is about to get in the car and go gorilla trekking <laughs> 11 hours away by herself. She was prepared to do this shit by herself, but you know, I can't let her do that. So. You better get it. What's up? I walked out to the car that was picking me up and wondered why this guy was recording me on his phone. What's up, Kimberly? I haven't seen Al in almost five years. And I'll keep a long story short and just say he made it when I thought he wouldn't. Oh my god. What the fuck did he do? Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> Popped up in Uganda. Not only will we get to see gorillas in their natural habitat, but we'd experience one of the most beautiful countries I've ever seen. Rich in volcanic red soil, lush vegetation from an abundance of rain, home of the largest lake in Africa, and Ugandan culture. at the equator and saw a water demonstration of how the equatorial pull affects water going down the drain, depending on whether you're in the southern or northern hemisphere, or at zero degrees latitude. Then when you come here on March 21st and September 23rd, you know those two days called the equinox. They have equal day, equal night. Midday day, you have no shadow. You can't see your shadow because the sun is over here, the equator line. So here I want to see what's going to happen with the flower and the, along the zero degree latitude. Oh, okay. Chai. Chai. Wow. No rotation, that was straight. Chai. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. Mama, mama, mama. Just a bit smaller than the U.S. state of Oregon, which is home to 4 million, Uganda has over 47 million people. And it has the youngest population in the world, with 80% being younger than 30. A lot of people live in these mountains. Bwindi is located in southwestern Uganda and surrounded by agricultural landscape that supports them. If you like mountain roads, no matter how bumpy, you'll love this drive. The scenery alone is hard to beat. We arrived at the Gorilla Lodge just after sunset. While I was happy to be in such a beautiful place, I felt some type of way passing all those kids and families on the way up the mountain who only have a fraction of what this lodge affords. Small things like running water, hot water, electricity. We've even got chefs and masseuses. 
I don't like to see people struggle. And knowing that I had all these things and there were so many people so close by that didn't, didn't make me feel that great. Uh, our main timing is to serve in dinner at the Good morning. Today is the day that I go track for gorillas. Mm, I'm so tired. Look at my eyes. Today is the day we're going gorilla trekking in Windy Impenetrable Forest. Got Al right here with me. I have this beautiful scenery behind me. Uganda is beautiful. It took us about 11 hours to get here from Entebbe, but along the way, you're just looking at mountainous scenery. Now we're having breakfast, and then we're gonna head into the entrance of the park. It could take us anywhere from one to eight hours to find the gorillas, but it's a 99% chance that we're gonna see gorillas today. So I'm excited, countdown is over. I'm literally staring out at volcanoes. Um, so it's a beautiful day. Thank you. Got some gloves for our hands. Got my socks, my pants tucked into my socks so red ants don't get me. We're gonna be hacking through the bush. Really looking forward to this adventure. Upon arrival, you're given a short safety briefing and an overview of the park before you're separated into groups and we sent on your hike. Four areas where you can go and do gorilla trekking. So we have Bohoma, the northern part of the park, and this is where tourism started from, and this is where even our packet park, park quarters are. Okay. All right, so we're about to get started on this hike. Been, been aside to our guys. I have a porter to carry my bag. Normally, I, I wasn't planning to, but to not have to worry about the weight. We don't know how long we're going to be walking. We have lunch in there. And so, it costs about $15 to hire a porter. So, you know. But we are walking. The gorilla trek has begun. I'm so excited. <laughs> I had been waiting for this day. Myself and my followers were in alignment with this expedition, so I was excited to be on this journey. And of course, I've always felt like I was destined to be searching for gorillas in the wild. Yeah, Kimberly. Yeah. It's real good. You're like Iron Grenada in a country. <laughs> it's gonna be a good day, I feel it. The weather is nice so far. But you never know, we're in the mountains, so it could change at any time. Cool. That's the life you live, huh? <laughs> you can see very well. That's the, that's the edge of the forest down there. So we were perhaps we were going down there, and um, this land many years ago was flat and gentle, really flat and gentle. But because of forces in the area, what you call the invasion of forces which were brought about by geothermal, geochemical, and radioactivities. Convective currents happened, and some land were, were, crushed, were shuttered down, some were pushed upwards, downwards, which led the creation of these sharp fights. Otherwise, the land was flat, flat, and gentle. In addition to the rangers, you're escorted by a couple of armed guards carrying AK-47s for your safety. They are used to issue warning shots only. You should wear neutral colors and long sleeve pants and shirts to protect you from the elements. Hats and sunglasses are highly recommended. When you reach somewhere, you start using your bums. I can see you looking so smart, you're looking so good. By the end of the tour, you'll be dirty. You'll be full of mud. It's part of experience. They also suggest gaiters or long socks so that your pants can be tucked in. This is to avoid red ants crawling up your legs. But be prepared for plenty of insects, you guys. You're in the rainforest after all. The hike started off with this calm downhill walking, but very quickly got steep and slippery. 
The cost for a gorilla checking permit in Uganda is $700. This is $800 cheaper than its Rwandan neighbor. The first time my foot slipped out from underneath me, my porter grabbed my hand with intention. Now that I understood how this was gonna go, I had to put all my camera equipment away and just focus on not falling. At times, I brought out my phone though, because it was the easiest to handle on the move. This is beautiful. We're about 30 minutes in and it is a steep climb down. Thank God for my porter who is being another <laughs> a support for me. Um, but this <laughs> So we are almost at the bottom to the entrance of the jungle and this hike down is something else. It rained a little bit last night so this mud is slippery. There are definitely all the poisonous snakes here and we are in some pretty thick bush and I can only imagine it's going to get thicker. This is my kind of adventure, especially when there's gorillas at the end. Well, I guess that won't really be the end because we'd have to come back up. We started at about 2,100 meters. When we get down, I will let you know what altitude that is so you can see how steep of a climb down we just did. Really, I have never done any hiking like this. And I love it. It's gorgeous out here, it's peaceful. It's like the mountains, it's very lush and green. He said we're about to reach the gorillas. We had all these uh, filming plans. Well, what an incredible climb down. We're about to reach the gorillas now. Dang, something bit me. It's really dense. It's a lot of bugs. Uganda has all the poisonous snakes. Um, but this has been a fun hike down. Definitely not an easy trek. Let's drill down from a bird's eye perspective. We descended 1,500 feet, just to the edge of the National Forest, before we found the Bushaha group. This way? We'll have one hour to spend with them. Oh, I see. It's right up above me in the tree. To be in the presence of these magnificent and powerful beings with their human-like characteristics was the experience of a lifetime. Gorillas are vegetarians. Their diet consists of leaves, stems, and fruits. 
no meat. Well, except for the occasional ant or termite. So how do they get so big and so strong? Well, if you sat around and ate salad every day for six hours, you'd get big too. They live at high elevations, have large heads, broad chests, and long arms. They have flat noses with large nostrils. This is Bahati, the dominant silverback of the Bushaho gorilla group, which consists of 10 gorillas. Mountain gorillas are critically endangered and found only in two small populations. In the Virunga volcanoes of Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and here in Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. There are about 300 gorillas left here. The rest are in the Virunga volcanoes. Their main threats are habitat destruction, poaching, and disease. An hour felt like five minutes. We stood there among hundreds of thousands of insects in the heat, watching as the gorillas noticed us but continued on with their lives. The forest was so dense that where I stood felt hollow. At one point, I was 15 to 20 feet away from them. I looked into the eyes of Bahati through the barrel of my camera lens and all I felt was gratitude. Thankful for the opportunity to be there Thankful for the breath in my body. Thankful for the lives of the gorillas. Oh my God, that was an amazing experience seeing these gorillas. We watched them for about an hour, and then at the last point, got to go down kind of close to them. Now we're headed back up. Should be an interesting climb, oh, but this is not for the week. I'm tired. Oh, it's starting to rain. I've seen the biggest earthworms out here. We stopped for a bit under a local dwelling and shared our lunches with the guides and porters while we accepted the rain. It was a much needed energy boost for the last 30 minutes of our hike. Back at the office, they'll award you with a gorilla trekking certificate, solidifying your experience.
And there you have it, an experience of a lifetime. From the people, to the food, to the land, to the gorillas, I felt nothing but welcomed in Uganda. The opportunity to share space with some of the last mountain gorillas on earth fulfilled my childhood dream. It's truly an adventure I will never forget. <laughs>